Alright, hi guys, hi guys, hello, welcome this evening. Um, this is going to be a very quick live and a very quick run, just so we'll go, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be going over a couple of things quickly. And uh, basically, when it comes to qualitative research now, uh, the number of things uh a bit unclear when you're trying to critique it right and i want to try and make it as clear as possible so there are certain terminologies that we use when we're critiquing that might be applicable to quantitative research but might not necessarily be applicable to qualitative research so take for example we use words like validity reliability when we are critiquing a quantitative research but when you're critiquing a qualitative research on the other on the other hand you cannot use those terminologies rather when it comes to uh, qualitative research the key thing you want to look at is the trustworthiness of the data you know i mean the key difference between quantitative and qualitative research is the fact that for qualitative research now you you're not quantifying anything. You're basically assessing people's perspectives and their opinions about certain issues. Unlike quantitative, where you have data to work with and measure, right? And you can quantify so many things like effectiveness. You can use valid tools to actually measure and actually analyze what you have. So, but for qualitative papers, that's not the same. It is totally different. So, when you're critiquing a qualitative data, there's that this this trustworthiness is something that you have to focus on, right? Now, trustworthiness can be grouped into like there are four main parts, and we have. I mean, I mentioned that in one of the previous videos. I mentioned it in passing, and I got a comment. I think that um, I should expand more on that. So that's what I'm trying to do now to tell you what the difference, what the, what the difference is between a qualitative and a quantitative research, right? So for qualitative, you have the trustworthiness, which is something that you really have to reflect on when, or you really have to critique when you are writing your critique that is on qualitative research. Now, trustworthiness can be grouped into credibility, dependability, transferability, and confirmability. So I was thinking that we could try to see how that relates to this paper that is showing on your screen right now. Hopefully we'll get to that, but that's what I was thinking we would do today. But time is really not on our side right now. The day is fast spent and there's something I need to jump on very soon. I just thought if I don't get on life right now, I might not be able to... Um, I may not be able to get on live today again, and that might be till next week, and that, that won't, that's, that's not nice, I guess. So, now back to what I was talking about. Let's see if we can at least exhaust credibility, okay? And then we'll see going forward, maybe next week, we'll see how we can continue from wherever we stop. So, this is the paper that I've chosen today. I've never read the paper before. It's new to me as much as it is new to you, but then... What the main point I'm trying to drive at is this trustworthiness. So let's start with the first, the first part of trustworthiness, which is the credibility. And for me, I think that's the most important part. It has to do, it has two parts on that. It. That means credibility has two parts on that. It. Probably I'll do a blog post on this and then we'll be able to, um, what's it called now? We'll be able to break it down further probably design a table and you'll be able to see it let me know if that's what something you would be interested in so what is triangulation what does it mean i'm trying to see if i can pull up if i can pull up an article that wrote something about it and then let's explore it together right okay so i've seen one as i was no one write up yeah this this is a really brilliant write-up so it says credibility is the first aspect or criterion that must be established that's in qualitative research now it is seen as the most important aspect or criterion in establishing trustworthiness this is because credibility essentially asks the researcher to clearly link the research study studies findings with reality in order to demonstrate the truth of the research studies findings 
Credibility also has the most techniques available to establish it compared to all the three aspects of trustworthiness. So I mentioned those three aspects earlier. Here we focus on the two most important techniques of assessing for credibility. That's triangulation and member checking. Okay, so you want to check if what you have, if what the researcher has done, the study findings, that's what, what this thing is saying is, the study findings, everything that has been done, is it credible? Is it true? Basically, like, is it in, in if you want to state it in, in quantitative terms, it will be, is it valid? Is it reliable? So now, is it credible in this sense? So to say, you, you want to check if it's actually valid. It has to do for, let me put it this way, Validity is to quantitative research as credibility is to qualitative research. Does that break it down? Does that make sense? I think it does. So what does triangulation mean? I mean, when you're carrying out a qualitative research, we understand that for qualitative research, you know, you want to, uh, what's the word now? You want to find out people's opinions. So you can't just ask someone a single question. I mean, based on human nature, you don't expect one person to, uh, you don't expect a person to answer you, give you all the details you need just by one sitting or by using one method, that by asking, oh, is this thing okay with you? They'll probably tell you yes. I mean, there might be so much more to that yes. It might be that yes, this aspect is okay with me. No, that aspect is not okay with me. Do you understand? But by asking a simple question, you will not be able to deduce the deep, uh, uh, understand or the deep perspective they have about that particular issue. So what triangulation is trying to establish is that the researcher has actually explored and as like you've extracted all the details there is to extract from your participant. So there are different ways to do this. It might be true method triangulation. And what that means is that they use different data collection methods. So for example, you might use, okay, after uh, with, you might use the focus group through the focus group, there are ways you will ask the question. While asking the question, you are observing their body language. You are observing every other thing to just, it's just a form of method triangulation using different methods to, in order to check the consistency of the findings. Yes. So as the person is saying it, imagine if you ask, are you okay with this thing? And they say yes. And their face is like, their face is saying no. So you can already see that triangulation comes in there and you're like, okay, but your face is saying something different. Is that something more? What part are you okay with? What part are you not okay with? So using that method triangulation allows you to go in deeper, like a lot deeper, right? So going forward now, we have triangulation of sources, still under triangulation and still under credibility now, do not forget. We have triangulation of sources. This involves using different data sources within the same method. This could be if you're using two different populations, interviewing people at different points in time, in private versus public, or comparing people with different perspectives. You get, you know, sometimes when you ask people some things in private and when you ask them in public, the answers are always different. So all what triangulation is doing, like I said earlier, is you're trying to exhaust uh, we are trying to make sure that you get the right answer and you make sure that there is a consistency with your findings. So you're making sure that you're actually getting the right details that you're supposed to be getting. So it might also be, there is also analyst triangulation. There's theoretical triangulation, okay? Analyst triangulation involves utilizing another analyst to review the findings, do you get? Or using multiple observers and analysts like so what that means is maybe one analyst has done the analysis of everything. You can bring in multiple analysts to come and check, like, is it correct? Has the person done it well? Or if you're observing, you can bring other observers. This is what I'm observing. Are you observing the same thing as well? Is it the same with you? So that's a way of checking that consistency of the findings. Now there's a theoretical triangulation. This involves using multiple theoretical perspectives to analyze the data. So it still a bit falls under the analyst triangulation, right? So now, how do you reflect this? That's where I'm going. How do you show this when you are critiquing? That means, so when you read a paper, 
like I've never read this paper before, so I'm not so sure what I'm going to find it. So when you read the paper, you want to be sure what was done, how it was done, and um picking out the part where you think triangulation could have occurred. So if triangulation had occurred, then you'll be like, say for example, let's see, let's see the impact of racism, let's see the methodology and how they supposedly did this thing now. So, Adolescent Mental Clinic of 2000 Visit Analy, the study consisted of 759 intake between this office. Okay. 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 Let's see. Okay, so did this did not exactly detail it. I mean, sometimes, you know, the details might be missing or might not be there, which, okay, um, maybe next week I'll probably look for another article that actually shows it. But in this case, that doesn't mean that you will now write about it. Let me still search very well. I'm sure that it's not there. In fact, the racism primarily. Okay. So it's not, it wasn't stated here. And so what that means is if you have this type of, if you have this type of paper, and it wasn't stated. So what you would do is you will have to state that in your work that okay, um, you checked, but it wasn't stated. Um, um, the credibility there was no way for you to access the credibility of the findings because they did not they did not tell you if there was triangulation or not. Do you understand? So that's still a form of critic, and you can easily tell what that means. I mean, you can easily write what that means for the study or sometimes you might have to assume like based on something that was written maybe they said uh we searched so you can say it is assumed that based on the word we used in this sentence we said it implies that multiple analysts actually uh checked the findings this in turn would mean that there was a form of analyst triangulation impacting on the credibility of the study findings then you reference it do you understand so that's where it comes in that's how important it is so if it's not there make sure you note that it is not there so another form of checking another way to check um credibility of the findings is this other method not usually mentioned but it's called member checking i remember one particular paper i read earlier um a couple of weeks ago right i think i read it on life as well i'm not sure where once um they had like an interview it was an interview it was an interview form of data collection that was used and what happened was after the interview after the or everything it was open-ended interview after everything was collected so you sort of reiterate back to the patient or the participant sorry back to the participant telling the participant like this was what you said check with them the data you collected the interpretation that you got from what they said and then they will have to confirm to you that yes that was what i meant no that wasn't what i meant i meant this do you understand how that affects the credibility now yes that's member checking so that's another way to actually check the credibility of a study so when you have i mean if you don't take anything away from this live video today take that away when you have take this fact away okay because i mean i'm rushing kind of and uh, i almost want to get off very very soon and uh, i'll see you next week by god's grace and you probably will be able to go more in depth by next week and maybe i'll look for a better paper that actually shows it if that's okay with you guys let me know in the comment section okay so if you don't take anything away from this study let's 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 go over what we have said in summary when it comes to qualitative research you do not mention reliability or validity those two concepts belong to or, um reliability or validity let's focus on that you do not mention reliability or validity those two concepts belong to quantitative research for qualitative research you want to focus on the trustworthiness now when we talk about trustworthiness there are four components you have credibility you have dependability you have transferability and confirmability those are the four components 
that tells you about the trustworthiness of a study, right? So now in today's video, we're focused on credibility. So for credibility, there are two ways to check credibility, either by triangulation or member checking. Triangulation is when you use multiple ways to be sure of the consistency of your findings. Like an example I gave was, you can use, uh, after an analyst has, has analyzed the data, you can use multiple analysts to now confirm, is it consistent, is it correct? That's a way to check for credibility. Another way is to use two different methods, maybe observation and interview. You observe the body language, if it goes along with what the person is saying, that's another way to check triangulation. And all this still impact on credibility. So now, on the credibility, we have triangulation, which I just explained. And the second thing we have on the credibility, the second item is member checking. And I said that member checking is when you actually confirm with the participants if the details they have given is what you have written down, like the interpretation you gave to the details they gave is actually correct. And the participant confirms back to you that yes, it is correct. That's what I actually meant. So that is what credibility is all about. So basically all the, the part of trustworthiness that we discussed in today's video is credibility. But I'm sorry, I haven't been able to show you in this uh, study, but I will I will do, do, do so next week. I'll make sure I look for the appropriate um, the appropriate paper that actually reflects it so that we can highlight that part. And next time when you're critiquing a qualitative paper, you will be able to have access or you'll be able to understand that, oh, this is actually credibility. Oh, what part of credibility is this? Is this triangulation or is this member checking? And then you'll be able to put that with... Um, you'll be able to impute that in your article or in your, uh, in your essay rather or in your critic right i hope that makes all the sense i hope that makes sense so today's video is going to be really short i am so so sorry i thought we'll be able to go on for longer but unfortunately we won't be able to but that's what i want to take away from this video and i promise that next week Next week, by God's grace, I will come on live and then spend more time with you guys. Bring a better article that reflects this appropriately. This is actually a very beautiful, um, a very beautiful research, actually. But it's not detailing the methodology as I would have loved it to. The methodology was just mentioned in person. It wasn't as detailed as it's expected to be so and that's okay right so i will get a better article that details this so that we can underline where or we can highlight where credibility is where dependability is where transferability is and where confirmability is and that way anywhere you see a qualitative paper qualitative you will be able to answer this critic very well that's all i have for you for today thank you so much for coming on this quick life with me i mean my life my live stream is not usually this short but today is it is what it is okay so thank you so much guys i really love that you guys are supporting you guys are sending messages i appreciate it and i want to apologize that the website has been down for a while now and i promise you that very soon probably tomorrow it should be back up and all those that are sending me emails concerning the extraction um extraction uh form or extraction file that they're unable to download from the website the website will be back up very very soon and possibly going forward it would be so much better we won't have this downtime anymore and my email will be open to as as from tomorrow so you guys can send me messages and let me know how I can be of help to you guys. I really appreciate all your support and I'm really, really grateful. Thank you so much for coming on live with me, guys. I will see you guys next week. Actually, uh, there'll be a video coming up on Saturday, then I'll see you guys next week. Thank you so much, guys, for being here. See you next week. Bye. And until then, make sure you put a smile on somebody's face. That's very important. Bye, guys. Bye.